So my name is Tori Collins. I am the manager at Ups Country Sport Fishing on the Farmington River in uh, New Hartford. I've been a fly fisherman since I was 14 and I've been in the fly business in one way, shape, form or another since I was 20. You know, working in fly shops, guiding, tying flies and uh, pretty much everything in between. We're located in New Hartford, Connecticut, right off Route 44, uh, on the banks of the Farmington River, which is the big draw for most of the customers coming through the door here. It has evolved into the, I would say, the premier trout stream in Connecticut. We're a bottom release, cold tailwater. We maintain a stable flow through the summer. It stays fishable in the winter, so it's literally a 12 month fishery. We have a 21 mile trout management area that they intensively manage for high quality trout fishing. We have a mixture of stocked, holdover, and wild trout of all three species, brown trout, brook trout, rainbow trout, and a decent population mixed underneath those of wild brown trout. There are some wild brook trout and on rare occasion, we do catch uh, an occasional wild rainbow. There is a real diversity of water types here. I mean, if, if you want to do a little walking, you can typically find a little elbow rum. The majority of the anglers probably concentrate on the permanent catch and release section. If you go out of that, generally the pressure isn't as high. And I would say the further you go downstream from that, generally, except for maybe a few spots, the less the pressure the access points become a little more spread out. And if you're willing to walk, you can typically find a little bit of elbow rum. We've become a destination fishery. I'd say since this became a special regulation fishery with catch and release and the survivor train trout, the, the fishery has gotten really nothing but better for the last 30 years. The downside is it's gotten exceptionally popular, uh, sometimes a little too popular when you're trying to find a spot. Our clientele comes from all the surrounding states. I mean, we're in Connecticut, we, you know, we border you know, Massachusetts and New York, Rhode Island. We get people coming from Pennsylvania, which always surprises me because Pennsylvania is one of the best trout straits in the Eastern US, but some of them will come here. Uh, we get lots of people coming from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, you name it. I'm always surprised how far people come to fish here, but you know, it's, it's, become, a, it's become a really famous river. Is there such a thing as a quick peek in a fishing store? <laughs> we get a wide diversity of bug life on the river. Skewing toward, there are a lot of smaller bugs here. This, the river has a reputation as a technical small fly fishery. And there's definitely some truth to that. There are a lot of smaller bugs, you know, skewing to that 16 to 24 range and, you know, an even smaller. Um, there's bigger bugs too, though. They're not, they're not all small. A few different, uh, a few different the most consistent method, just like anywhere else, is probably nymphing here. And good old standbys, like, like a pheasant, like a small pheasant tail will work year round here. The river's chuck full of caddis, so, Caddis larva, or this time of year when the caddis are active, basically mid-spring through maybe mid-fall, caddis pupa are, are rarely a good choice. Uh, you always want to, when you come in, take a look at the hatch board, see what's hatching. If you want to fish dry flies, you definitely want to match the hatch. It could be a rough time throwing generic flies if they're not a somewhat close approximation of what's hatching. But I mean, every, me every uh, method has its moment here. It can be good streamer fishing, especially low light or high off color water or in the fall. It's seeing more and more customers fish wet flies and soft tackles. That's probably still an underutilized method, but you know, this time of year when you have lots of bugs hatching and optimal water temps, it's, it's also an excellent choice. I would say for a lot of people, the big draw though is the dry fly fishing here. I would consider the Farmington an above average dry fly river because we get a diversity of hatches. There literally isn't a month of the year 
when you don't have the possibility of catching a fish on a dry fly. Local guy, Andy Butler, I think he's up to well over 200 months in a row with a fish on a dry fly. So that's over 200 months. If you know where to look, you can usually find a few fish rising. Although, of course, the, the most consistent dry fly pools here are, are well known and popular.